Breaking news, The New Yorker tonight reporting serious and extremely disturbing allegations from six women who say they were sexually harassed and intimidated by the chairman and CEO of CBS, Les Moonves. One woman, actress Ileana Douglas, so look, some of these people, a lot of courage here to go out by name. She is putting her name and her face on this, known for her roles in Goodfellas and Six Feet Under, which aired on HBO, describes one encounter with Moonves in his office this way, quote, in a millisecond, He's got one arm over me, pinning me, she said. Moonvis was violently kissing her, holding her down on the couch with her arms above her head. Quote, what it feels like to have someone hold you down. You can't breathe. You can't move, she said. The physicality of it was horrendous. Now, these allegations, which Ronan so carefully goes through against Moonvis, took place uh, over a long period of time, between the 1980s uh, and the late 2000s. The reporter who broke it, Pulitzer Prize winner Ronan Farrow, is out front with me now. And uh, Ronan, thank you. I know you've, you've had a, 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 a crazy day getting this through. When you, when you do reporting like this, you've got to get people willing to put their names on it. You've got to corroborate it all. You've got to get through lawyers. You've got to deal with the, uh, the company that doesn't want it out there. Um, there was a pattern, though, that, that you found here. Harass and intimidate, and you go through example after example. And there are these, as you say, very disturbing allegations against Les Moonves. But I, I think what's so significant here, Aaron, is you're dealing with both an individual who is at the top of his game and on whom many, many other powerful people depend for their livelihoods. Yes. And also a, a corporation that is at the apex of our culture, that shapes our news, that shapes our fiction that we consume. And... As it turns out within this, in many facets of the company, and we're careful not to overgeneralize, but we do say that there are a string of examples mm -hmm. uh, manifested in litigation and complaints inside the company where people said, uh, this happened to me too. This wasn't just Les Moonves. This was a culture of protecting powerful people. And, and, and look, I want to, as I said, you go through many examples. Uh, Ileana Douglas's account uh, that was part of it that I, I found very disturbing. I sort of cringed and had to stop reading for a couple minutes when I read this. Uh, but, but I think it's important for viewers to hear it because this is what, uh, this is what uh, she is saying happened. And by the way, uh, as you say, she told people at the time, mm -hmm. multiple people, so that is the corroboration. And, and there is yeah. also a paper trail in this case. She did secure a settlement from CBS. And right. we talk about all of the back and forth about how explicitly that was about a sexual uh, assault, uh, as she alleges. The company says it was not about that, that she was fired for unrelated reasons, but many other people involved, including her attorney at the time and Martin Scorsese, who was her partner at the time, who referred her to that attorney, right. vouch for her account. Right. And obviously she told Martin uh, Scorsese at the time, so uh, obviously a name that, mm -hmm. that everyone watching would know as well. So, so this is from your article and her account, Ileana Douglas again, quote, she recalled lying limp and unresponsive beneath Moonvis. You sort of black out, she told me. You think, how long is this going to go on? I was just looking at this nice picture of his family and his kids. I couldn't get him off me. She said it was only when Moonvis aroused, pulled up her skirt and began to thrust against her that her fear overcame her paralysis. She told herself that she had to do something to stop him. At that point, you're a trapped animal, she told me. This is you writing. Your life is splashing before your eyes. Um, that is really disturbing and disgusting. And what happened next? Uh, so I, I think what's significant here is exactly as you're suggesting, not necessarily just these very disturbing details, but the fact that she says this seemed to be part of a pattern of retaliation. Uh, she alleges in this case that he backed her against a wall shortly after this encounter as she tried to when leave. When she finally and, got up to leave, and, right. And said, you know, this has got to stay between us. And she was very frightened. But more significantly, uh, she then gets fired not long after from the show that she's working on and from her overall deal with CBS. Um, and there's a, a long narrative about the settlement that she secures, but her feeling was that this was covered up, that she had few people to turn to, that everyone was telling her he's too powerful to confront, uh, and that you know everyone else went on with their lives, but she had a career that suffered. And every woman in here tells a story that mirrors that component of it. Right. When you talk about CBS, and, and as you point out, the difference between uh, Last Moonvis and Harvey Weinstein, uh, obviously many details about the things are different, but in terms of where they are in their careers and the significance of CBS in the entertainment industry, obviously right now, it, it, it is at the apex, one, one could say, right? So it, it is a very different prospect for us to confront these kinds of serious allegations when someone is, to use yeah. that word, at the apex. So uh, Janet Jones, another person uh, that you talk about here, uh, trying to break into the industry as a writer, 1985, she meets with Moonvis for a pitch meeting. Uh, he, she comes in, I guess, later in the day, assistant lets her in, but then the assistant turns out, then just kind of leaves. 
He gives her a glass of wine. Suddenly, Jones told me he came around the corner of the table, threw himself on top of me. It was very fast. Moonva, she said, began trying to kiss her. Jones said that she struggled and then shoved him away hard, yelling, what do you think you're doing? Moonva, appearing startled, got up. Well, I was hitting on you. I wanted a kiss, she recalled him saying. That allegation is extremely powerful because that shows uh, it, 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 it was a pattern, and a pattern perhaps of not great significance to him, just how he did business. That was the feeling of several of these women, that this seemed practiced. Mm -hmm. And they all continued to fear retaliation. You know, Janet Jones, the writer you just mentioned, um, describes him calling her afterwards and threatening her and, and saying these sort of things that appear to be cliches to us, but obviously coming after a work meeting and after an alleged assault like this mm -hmm. um, are very, very serious and frightening, like you're never going to work again. And she and these other women were still frightened to come forward, but said they were doing so because they wanted to expose what they feared was a culture of impunity that so, could protect other women if it's reversed. So Les Moonves, and in some of these cases, has said, I remember, the, I remember an interaction. Obviously, he denies any sort of threats or retaliation. Yes. Um, he has put out a statement in response to your reporting. I want to read it. And, and this yeah. is in our story as yes, well. I just want to point it. out. You did include it. You didn't, you're, you're not trying to mask this at all, but I want to make sure we put it out there as well. Um, Throughout my time at CBS, this is from Les Moonves, we have promoted a culture of respect and opportunity for all employees and have consistently found success elevating women to top executive positions across our company. I recognize that there were times decades ago when I, have may, when I may have made some women uncomfortable by making advances. Those were mis mistakes and I regret them immensely, but I always understood and respected and abided by the principle that no means no, and I have never misused my position to harm or hinder anyone's career. So... This, this this came out a few hours ago. Mm -hmm. You're going to start getting a whole lot of phone calls, and perhaps you already have from, from, from people. Um, these allegations go from mid-'80s all the way through the 2000s. Has his alleged behavior stopped, to your knowledge? You know, I, I can only speak to the examples we report on, and you accurately describe the period they're in. Mm -hmm. It was very important to us that CBS and Les Moonves have a, a very ample opportunity to engage in this, and their input is really reflected in here. Look, I, I think you make an insightful point there. Uh, these are allegations that are very, very heavily corroborated. You know, yes. the, the facts are on the side of these women or this wouldn't be in print here. Um, and they're backed through paper trails and multiple witnesses and so forth. But you're right that perspectives can vary and sometimes a pattern of behavior can be less significant for the alleged assailant than for the alleged victims. And I think that what was important here in the minds of these women was not taking down Les Moonves or the effect on Les Moonves's career. It was bringing light to these kinds of stories, which I think will resonate with women and men in so many industries. Hmm. All right. Well, Ronan, thank you very much. It's an incredible piece of reporting. As you say, 8,000 words. Everyone, take your time. Read it. I have read it. I'm going to read it again and read it even more slowly because it's uh, some, some really powerful work. And thank you so thank much, you, Ronan. Thank you,